It is wonderful to be here, and thank you to everyone who was involved in preparing this conference. I'm looking just briefly at how much time I have. 30 minutes. One afternoon, at the end of my day on our school campus, I was walking to chapel for Vespers. In front of me was a seminarian walking next to his wife. She had just come from work. I overheard her sharing with her husband about a difficult person at work. She is so annoying, the wife said. She is constantly giving her opinions. She doesn't listen to anyone. It's so frustrating, continued the wife. When she finished speaking, her husband said to her, you have to be patient. She became very quiet and kept walking in silence. Maybe the husband was expecting his wife to answer him by saying, thank you very much for that wise spiritual counsel. I have never heard of patience. I did not think of that. Does she really need to be told to be patient? Mostly, she knows about patience. I am sure the husband was trying to be helpful, but his response his guidance, did that help her grow in patience? Was it a mature response from the husband? Was his response going to help his wife to mature? What would help her mature? I'd like to ask you, what do you think his wife was looking for? Understanding. Understanding. Being heard. Being heard. Compassion. Compassion. What was the husband trying to do? To fix. To fix. <laughs> he was trying to help. Wasn't he? Have you ever experienced this? Right? When we share a struggle, when we have a struggle, and we share it, it does not really help us when we are told what to do, when someone gives us an answer, when someone corrects us, or gives us theological advice or even tries to cheer us up. But you love that job, he could say. Or give positive thoughts. Think about the nice things about her. I don't have very much time, so I do not want to speak on what we should not say. But I do have to say a little that oftentimes when someone shares with us, we are tempted to say things like, I have had the same experience. Let me tell you about it. Or you shouldn't feel that way. Don't feel that way. Or here's what to do. I think the seminarian husband felt like he had to do something to be helpful. And I agree. But that something is, in fact, just to listen, to be present, to be responsive, which is often the hardest thing to do. In some ways, maybe my talk should be the last talk at the conference because for the next few days, we will be talking all about people maturing, 
What is maturity? How children mature? The roles of others in maturing? The psychological aspects of maturing? Yet we know that maturing is not something we do to people. Maturing happens naturally when the environment is right. And when the environment is right, it happens well. Like with fruit or with plants, humans are created to grow and mature. What we do is create the right environment such that we all grow naturally and in a healthy way. I would like to share how to listen to God and to one another, to hear one another, is our path of our own maturing and how we nurture a culture of maturing where children can grow up naturally. To do that, I would like you to answer a question. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it is easy to listen to someone? And sometimes it is very hard. When it is difficult to listen to someone, what makes it difficult? What makes it difficult for you sometimes to listen to someone? What's that? When you hear negative emotions, and by negative you mean anger, criticism. Hold on a sec, that's good. I wanna repeat, when we, someone criticizes, criticizes us, or when they're angry, something happens to us. Do you know what? We get filled with a warm sense of peace? No, what is it? Maybe we get scared and it's hard to listen. When we are scared, it's hard to hear someone. And the second answer was, when people give opinions, it's hard to listen. What is that? Someone says, I believe, I don't even want to give a pretend opinion because I don't want to create conflict. But there is plenty of conflict in our world where when someone shares their opinion, something happens to us. When I have no time. Someone speaks and I don't feel like I have any time. What happens to us? Our heart starts to get intense. We have some sort of emotional reaction. Sometimes that is also fear. I have too much to do. I don't have time to be present with you for even 10 seconds. Others, when do you find it difficult just to listen to someone? When someone comes with the same problem over and over and over again. When, when someone comes with the same problem over and over. And what happens to you? I become frustrated. Overwhelmed, impatient, and that frustration makes it difficult to hear. Anyone else? When do you have difficulty listening? What is it? Or is there someone in your life who is difficult to listen to? And how long have you been married to him? I'm just... When you realize that it's, it's not addressed to you, actually. It's addressed to someone else. 
So when someone is sharing a struggle about someone else and they're sharing with you, it's hard to listen? Because you realize that it's addressed to, to someone else, not to, to myself. And that makes it hard to hear? Okay. When I am tired, it's hard to listen. When I don't understand the feeling. When I don't understand the feeling. Excellent, I'll repeat it. Two different opinions. In fact, I am such a poor listener, I'm gonna finish your sentence for you. Two different opinions. I feel I have to say my opinion and we just have to keep speaking. One of the hallmarks of poor listening is finishing someone's sentence. Why? It's hard to be patient. I want to speak. Have you ever interrupted someone because you thought, if I don't say this now, I might forget it? And so we interrupt and we say it. Or how about when someone comes to you with a struggle, we feel this need to give our opinion, to correct or to give advice. One of the challenges of being a priest is people go to the priest to give them the answer to their problems. And the priests feel a lot of pressure. If you are a good priest, you will give me the answer. Because that is not good or what's beneficial, the priest does not have an answer. So he can feel this pressure that I must give an answer or they will be upset or they will be hurt. If you notice, all these things that happen in our hearts and all these thoughts that go through our minds make it difficult just to listen. Listening is not passive, it is active. Oftentimes we think, I don't, listening, I'm not doing anything. But actually, when we look at what it really takes to listen and what listening actually is, we find that it's active. In order for me to listen to you, what do I need to do with all the thoughts in my head and all the tension in my heart? I need to put it away. It takes real effort to stop thinking and to find peace and just to be present. Oftentimes we think when someone is speaking, we are preparing a response. And if we are thinking about a response, we can no longer hear. To listen is to listen so we can understand, not so we can respond. And when we actually just hear someone, something happens in that person and something happens in us. Listening is an act of the will that we have to make a choice when someone is speaking to us we need to make a choice to put our thoughts aside, a choice to take a deep breath and pay attention to what that person is saying, no matter what goes on with us. What does it take to put aside our thoughts and to calm ourselves? Listening is an act of asceticism. It takes real self-discipline to shut our minds down and attend. To listen to someone is self-sacrificial. I need to deny my impulses. I need to control myself and my desires. 
I need to cut off my will. I really want to say something. I need to say no to that. Sometimes it is easy, and sometimes it takes tremendous effort to resist the temptation to speak, to resist the temptation to react. Yet to truly listen is to be still and to be close. Psalm 46.10, we are called to be still and know that he is God. Listening is an act of self-denial. Listening is about suspending our own needs, suspending our very self and taking an interest in the other person. We don't lose ourselves when we listen, although that is something we might fear. But we are offering ourself simply by putting our emotions and our thoughts aside and attending to this person. Listening means acknowledging what someone is saying without permeating your response with yourself. Listening means taking in, not taking over. Listening means sitting with someone's worries, their anxieties, their struggles, their confusion, their pain, their grief in peace. Oftentimes when someone is struggling, it is as if there's clouds over their head and it's dark. But we know, because we have all flown in airplanes, that no matter how much it is raining and dark, When the airplane goes above the clouds, it is always shining. To listen to someone is to descend beneath the clouds and to sit close, but to have the peace that knows the sun is always shining. We don't say that to them you know the sun is always shining. We witness that with our peace. Have you ever experienced someone actually listening to you? What does that feel like? It feels nice because listening is an act of intimacy. Listening nurtures intimacy, a closeness and a connection that comes from being heard. When someone feels heard, they feel close and connected. Listening nurtures trust and builds relationships, which is the foundation of any teaching we will do to students or any ideas and thoughts that we have. And it is essential for all our relationships, our marriages, our parenting. If somebody tells you, you can trust me, you can trust me, you can trust me, the more they say, you can trust me, the less I believe them. But when somebody actually listens peacefully without reacting, we feel like I can trust this person. And sometimes we share just a little bit with someone to see if we can trust them. And what are we listening for? Well, are they peaceful? Do they listen? And then I share more. 
Listening communicates care. That when we actually feel heard, we feel cared for. Listening communicates that you are a priority to me. You are important and you are valuable. If we even take 15 seconds to stop what we're doing, stop what we're thinking, make eye contact and listen, it sends a powerful message that you are important. I value you. Which is why it is very important for those of us in positions of authority to recognize the power of listening. Because when someone in a position of authority, a teacher, a principal, a priest, a father, a bishop, when they stop everything and just focus on one person, it sends a very powerful message of how important we are. Listening is an expression of our authority. Listening is an act of humility. This means taking ourselves out of the circle, the center of the circle, and making the other person their needs as primary. Humility means I'm gonna focus and concern myself more with who you are, what you think, rather than my opinions and what I think. Listening is an act of the heart. Because when we look at what makes listening difficult, it's not our ears that have a problem hearing. It's our fears, our reactions, our hearts. To peacefully hear someone requires a stillness of our heart and a purity of heart. When Christ said to his apostles, let he who has ears to hear, let them hear, he wasn't talking about their ears because if he were, he could have given them ears. He does that. He was talking about their hearts. What he said was, those whose hearts are able to receive what I'm receiving, let them hear. Listening is an act of hospitality. When we show hospitality, we prepare our home. We set the table. I went to such a beautiful dinner last night and it was beautiful hospitality. Beautiful table. The home was clean. I bet it's like that every night. And what did the host and hostess do? They welcomed me and they just attended. That is listening. We don't welcome someone in our homes and then talk at them and talk at them. Too often, we are so busy within our hearts and busy in our minds that we, don't, we can't make room in our hearts just to hear someone. We are so tempted to be Martha in the gospel who is always doing things and busy that there's no room in our hearts just to hear someone. The beauty of listening is that when we actually listen, something happens. Listening is an act of healing. This is the paradox of true listening and true maturity. The less we do and say, the more we accomplish. 
when someone feels heard, they feel better. They feel encouragement. They feel care. They feel support. It is a little bit miraculous because they, they gain clarity. They hear God speaking in their hearts and they're changed. And we didn't do anything except the hard work of listening. People experience relief from their suffering when we draw close and join them in their suffering without being able to solve anything. And we see this pattern in how God relates to us. God did not stay up in heaven and solve our problems remotely. He becomes human and takes on our struggles. When we struggle, he draws close. He doesn't fix our problems, but when he is close, that changes everything. Matthew 5, 4, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Listening is an act of faith. In order to shut down our minds and find peace, and let go of trying to figure things out or trying to respond. We need to trust that everything will be okay. Because to truly let go of our thoughts and calm our feelings, we are gonna feel less in control. In fact, if you truly listen to someone, it can feel out of control. Like we're losing our authority because as an authority figure, I should have an answer. I should have a response. Yet, as an act of faith, we must recognize that our authority does not come from being in control or from having an answer. But if we try to listen, it can feel out of control. I want to tell a story, but I don't want to speak too fast for the translators. But I, I'm going to finish shortly. I have a friend who has nine children. I was at his home, and we were talking, and his 12-year-old boy came up to him and tried to talk to him. Something was wrong. He was upset. So my friend turns to me, he knew I, read, I wrote a parenting book. And he says, you're the expert. Tell me what I should do. He was teasing me. But I like that. And I said, I will tell you what to do. Just listen to him. So the father turned to the son and said, tell me what's going on. And the boy just relaxed and his face lit up and he started to share all his struggles. In about 30 seconds, the father said, I can't handle this anymore. I don't know what to do. You take over and he left. And I said, yes, to truly listen is to let go of knowing what to do or of having to figure things out. Listening is a self-offering. It's a type of death. It's a death to our will and a death to our desires. And in the Christian tradition, this is a type of martyrdom. And it might sound dramatic to call listening a martyrdom until you actually try and listen to someone who's difficult to listen to. But the Greek word for martyr means witness. That the martyrs were witnessing love, love for God. 
to truly listen, the listening that's difficult is a witness of love, a witness of God's love. And it communicates love. Even if you just do it for 10 seconds in the middle of the day. The last thing I'm gonna say is that listening is sacramental. That is to say, we believe that the Holy Spirit changes us and transforms us, but it's not magic. We recognize that going to church and then leaving is not magic, but requires our participation. The Holy Spirit changes us, but we need to say yes to being changed. And we say yes by turning away from selfish impulses, turning away from doing what we want and offering ourselves. And when do we have an opportunity to use self-control, turn away from our impulses and offer ourselves? When someone is sharing with us that in every encounter we have with each other is an opportunity to grow, to mature ourselves and to be transformed as we understand that I don't need to speak even though I feel like it. And if this person has an opinion, I don't need to say anything. So listening is not all we do, but it's always the first thing to do. So let's go back to that seminarian. I don't have time to ask you what the seminarian could have done so I will just say, what if the seminarian, is that my time? See, number one, what if he said nothing and just peacefully stood next to his wife? Or what if he said, that sounds very frustrating and said nothing? Or what if he said, tell me more about what makes that hard? What if he was curious? He would need to take a deep breath to calm his heart. He would need to remind himself that I am a problem solver as a man, but the problem I should be solving is not my wife's problems, but the problem of her being alone. And I can solve that. And then he would be still. Do you know what would happen? She would share, she would share her struggles, and I bet at the end, she would say, it's very hard, I just need to be patient. Thank you very much.